Good morning, Metaverse. I'm Thor with the OCG and Mafia Guilds. I have gone down the Pegaxi rabbit hole. So I want to share a couple videos with you in regards to how to get started with it, uh, why I see it as a great potential, and some of the tricks and, and tips that I've built up over the way. So let's get started. <laughs> So the first thing I did is go to the white paper, the pegaxi.io white paper, and read up on the game to get to understand the, the basics of it. But the main thing I want to focus on right now is breeding. So with the breeding, they have a pretty straightforward setup, much like Axie Infinity, how each consecutive breed costs more and more, and that you have a utility token and then sort of a, a governance token that is a, a stable 30 PGX, the pegaxi stone coin for all the breeds and then a varying cost with the viz which is for vigorous is the name of the coin starts at 2000 works all the way down and for that last breed it's going to cost 42,000 and so at the current price the coin is at roughly 14 cents so that is going to be about five thousand eight hundred dollars for that last breed so that's an expensive last breed and what that does is creates a huge burning mechanism for the game in general and keeps that the price of Viz actually relatively stable and high. So you know, even though you'll get in here and you're earning a lot of Viz from your races and Pegaxis are really producing a lot, the burning mechanisms for this breeding has kept up pace and, and actually managed really well as of the last several months since it was first launched. So you want to understand how the breeding numbers work. And then you have the bloodlines, which is an interesting way that they, they work it out. Real straightforward for different types of genetics. You have the bloodlines of Zan, Klein, Kampona, and Haas. And so to understand Zan is the most predominant trait and Haas is the most recessive trait. So this graph does a really good job of understanding if read one against the other, which one's going to pop out. And so Haas is the most recessive. So the Haas's that I have, I usually breed them with Haas's because eventually if people start breeding them with other bloodlines, then the Haas will be phased out long term. And then you also have the breed types, which is sort of the rarity, another version of rarity. And so founding, if you have a founding Pegaxi, it is one of the original Pegaxis. And two founding ones bred together get you a legendary, and then you go down the epic. And if they're bred with anything other than legendary, you're going to get something like a rare or a pacer. And so the pacer is the most common version. It, it will eventually work its way down to, to pacers. And so that actually pacers is majority of the Pegaxis that, that I I deal with um, trying to build up scholarship programs and earn viz on a daily basis. And so that's how that breeding aspect works out. So if you're trying to get a higher breed type, legendary or an epic, then you're going to need to look at that when we go to the marketplace. And then also the cooldown time. This is really what starts to affect the Haas, Kampona, Klein, and Zans. Okay. So you have the Haas, which has a cooldown time for the Pega to breed again is 24 hours. So once it breeds, Breeds, it takes another 24 hours and then it can breed again. Kampona is 48, so that's two days. Klein is three days. Zan is four days. Then for the length of time needed to for a newborn to breed, well, a Haas is one day and two day, three day, four day as it goes down the line. And that'll come into factor when you're actually looking at purchasing these. When you look at the details, if you're going to buy a Zan, well, if it's Zan and it has another three days before you can breed it or race it, and this one was actually for racing. I think I missed spoke and said breeding. So it, it takes four days for a baby Zan to be able to race, whereas a Haas can race the next day, which gives you a two-day period of earning viz. And so if you're earning roughly 300 viz a day, you have six, 900 viz difference from a Haas and a Zan if they're at their, their max cooldown. And so that's something to take in consideration. I actually did that and, and didn't notice it at first. I bought a Zan that had still another three days cooldown time. So before I was able to, to race it. And then there's also the baby Pegas, how long it takes before you can breed them, which all of them are four days. Okay, so that's pretty standard. And then you need to have a male and a female in order to breed them together. That makes pretty good sense, but that also gives you a little bit more variation when you start breeding them together, what you get as a result. You might have to purchase another Pega and or rent it out from somebody else, which is kind of a cool concept. So let's jump over to the actual Pegaxi site. And so these are my assets. I have five different Pegas right now. And I bought four of these 
on the marketplace and I just bred this one. And so it's actually going through its cooldown period. It's a Haas, so it'll be able to re race in a day, but it'll need to wait four days essentially until yeah, I breed again. So I went on to the marketplace and on the marketplace, I go to my Pegas and this is where you have all of your Peg Axes that are up for sale, either in auction or a flat price. And so I purchased my Peg Axes from this marketplace and then I was able to take it to the breeding portion. And so if you have any Pegaxes that are available to breed, they will show up here. And then I've made another little video to show the actual breeding process to help you guys see what that looks like. But when I'm on the marketplace, what I'm looking for is I will go and use some of these tools that help you pare down the exact type of Pegaxe that you want to find. And they've done a really good job of making this streamlined. So if I'm looking for Haas, I'm only going to pick the Haases and that pairs it down. And then the other ones that I usually use is I take take the breeding count. So if I'm looking for a virgin, I want to breed quickly and for the lowest price, I'll put that filter on and then I'll have it sort by the lowest price because I, I like to start there. And then the listing has auctions. And so sometimes I've found some really good deals on just auctions. So I'll hit just the auctions. And so this is all Haas's auctions and the least expensive bids right now. So 1,700 is the least expensive bid right now, but it's got 23 hours before the auction finishes up. We have a couple of six hours, nine hours. So let's see what else is out. Three hours, another one, two hours nothing that's coming up right away. So I can then look into these. And one other one that will be useful is actually the gender. And so I just read a Pegaxi that is a male. And so I'm going to be looking for a female counterpart. And so I'll break that down into just the females. And so these will all be good options for my next breed for a Haas Pacer female. 1,700 is a great start. A lot of times they'll reach up to about the 2,000 range right now, but we will see what the market does. And so in six hours, seven hours, or I should say six hours, I will check back and see this next bid that's, that's coming up. You also start to see some from the Valentine's event, which means that they have a Valentine's aura around it. It's sort of a skin that you could purchase. And so ideally that would create more value to it. And so this one is, is on the market for 17,000 USDC or USDT. And you can see this one has, I believe this is legendary Valentine's. You have the hearts and, and the base that is showing a cool little graphical depiction of it and so those are out there as well what their actual value is that's going to be the, something that the market starts starts to find out as we let it rest but when i'm looking for a pigaxi a lot of the details are unknown right now so we're trying to figure this out you know does the bonus attributes which these are, are right here you have speed strength lightning wind water and fire which are supposed to represent the conditions of the race course that it has a bonuses to how much that affects whether whether that Pegaxi is going to win the race or will place first, second, or third. Trying to figure that out with races that I'm doing and with breeding and comparing those. And so far, I'm not sold on how significant these are right now. It seems a lot more to be random number generators, but I do see a difference in some of my Pegaxi. And so let me pull up the spreadsheet that I put together. These are my five different ones and three of them I've been racing for a few days now. And I have a win percentage of 30, 26, and 0.11, and 26.45. So pretty high win percentages. What I see on a lot of these, and let's go to one that's been raced before. We'll switch this out. Usually the ones that have been bred have been raced. So we'll look at these. So the win percent of this one, win percentage of 21.78%. Well, mine are 30, 26, and 26. And then I can also look at how many races. And so this number, the career race win loss, it shows how many it's won, 49 how many it's lost, 176, and a total of 225. At first, I was a little confused whether that was the first, second, third place winnings, but that's how many it's won, lost, and total. And that will come out to be this percentage. And so with the one that I have, this one has done 180 races, 30% done 251 races, and my 26.45 has done 586. So those numbers are actually holding long-term. So if it was just pure percentage, you should average out to about 25% win rate. And so it reports, did you get first, second, or third? That counts as a win, part of the win column for 49. And so there's basically, you have three, if first, second, or third place, so three out of the 12 racers, that's one quarter. So 25% win rate over the long period of time is what you should see if it was purely random. But there seems to be some 
variation because you'll see these win percentages down in the 19% all the way up into the 30%. I, the largest I've seen is like a 33%. And so that's something to, to take in consideration when looking for some good pegas at, at, at good prices. And so let's take it off of the auction and just go to the fixed price ones. And so these fixed prices, they have two breeds. You see the heart, it's been bred twice and it's on sale. You can buy it right now for 1140 uh, that's that's a lot for a video game, but the return on investment that I've been finding with these, and this is the the thing that I wanted to go over and really show you, is at the, at the current rate. So I've been racing my Pegaxis for about nine days, and at these numbers of first place, second place, and third place wins, this is the percent wins, and then I broke it down into how much how much value of viz it has gained me since I've owned it, and then what the daily rate is for these different Pegas. And right now my daily rate is seven. 72, 60, and 65. And that's at, at 16%, which actually it has dropped to 14 cents. So let's shift that. But in those nine days, I've made about $900, not almost $964 worth of viz were I to cash out. And so that is works out to be around a 700% a return on investment based off of how much I paid for them. So I paid, I paid big bucks for some of these compared to what they're going for right now. But I'm totally fine with that because I'm making a, a huge percent return annually. And so this is annual rate of return. So these are actual numbers that I've been finding and and that I've been using, just recording and keeping track to make sure that I have the best information and I want you guys to see exactly what I'm seeing and keep track of how much the price of Viz as it goes up and down and, and how that it works with it. But I mean, all the way down to, even if Viz went down to 5%, you're still making two, uh, 250% return on investment annually with these things. So the market has a lot of fluctuation and it's still a very profitable venture to get into. In my opinion, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is what I'm doing uh, and I'm pretty happy about it right now. So hope that was helpful for you to understand the basics of how Pegaxi works and how it looks and what I'm doing with it. I'm going to do another video on breeding and actually go through and do the breed. And then uh, we can talk a little bit more extensive about long-term price predictions and things that the development team is planning on doing in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't worry about liking or subscribing, but if you know somebody who would find this information useful and would take action and implement it, then please share it with them. I'd love to see the real action takers benefit from this incredible combination of cryptocurrency, play to earn gaming, and business financing. If you can do that, then today was a good day.